Happy Monday, everybody. Some big time football. It is time for the fantasy playoffs. Some really, really incredible puns on today's show. We break down the big performances and the pants that are filled with poop. We talk about what do we do with some of these players. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment if you're still alive and enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. It's Jerry McKinnon, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the show, the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you are so nasty, it's me, your host, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Right, with my best friend Jason Moore. We're uh, we're gonna have a, a great show. We're Rootin too, tootin'. We're two happy fellas today. Is that cause you're in the League of Record playoffs? Why I am. Are you in the League of Record playoffs? I am. Oh, that's great news. Congratulations. I will be happy for at least six more days. <laughs> I've got two weeks. So <laughs> Yeah, you do have the bye week. I have to uh, scratch and claw my way through the first round. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But welcome in, everybody. A gigantic week of football. Lots of studs. Lots of duds. Of course, some uh, unfortunate injuries. Mm -hmm. Felt like there was a decent amount of them. This yeah. week, especially actionable right. injuries. Uh, there were a handful of early injuries that oh yeah which took you out of game some of which oh man were before the game yeah injuries that sabotage were not reported well uh we will get into that a uh, couple house cleaning items here footclanvote.com we are we are fortunate to be nominated for a couple signal awards and if you would be so kind to vote for us it's just a couple clicks footclanvote.com it'll take you to you know, the, the site for those two awards, and just drop us a quick vote. It'll take you maybe two minutes. I voted. Took me less. I voted. It took you less than two minutes? Yeah, for sure. You're a distinguished gentleman, Thank though. Thank you. You are very tech savvy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a... What? Well, why'd you take it out of the... I was going to talk about the live stream, the DFS live stream, and then I got removed from my stuff that I'm supposed to talk it's about. It's a pretty special happening. It's a big event. Is that this Friday? This Friday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have tuned into the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast at all, uh, if you have not, I highly suggest you do. It is hosted by our own Kyle the Borgogan Borgononi. And our own Matthew Betts, the Betts guy, <laughs> who does Betsing. But Matthew Betts is making the long trek to get to Arizona. He's coming to visit us in the physical form. And so we thought, well, let's get these two fellas, Kyle Betts, in a room together. Have you ever been face-to-face -face with Matthew Betts? No, it's kind of like Love is Blind. This is our first reveal ever. Wow. But you've – it's kind of not like that at all because you've actually seen each other, like, on video. Yeah, it's just like that, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, it's – Like, it's, love is virtual. <laughs> gotcha. But they're having a big live stream, going to be, uh, you know – uh, just just having some chats, talk of some DFS. This is that is this Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's gonna be incredibly fun. I suggest you tune in and give those guys just give them a chance. They'll win you over. I promise. They'll probably win you some money too. They will. They will definitely do the debt. Uh, but it is Monday, Jason. Mm -hmm, yes. Let's get sophisticated. Who goes first? You go first. I will go first. Heaven Engram! Oh, Evan Kingram! Ladies and gentlemen, I could not be more pleased with Shmevin. Uh, oh. DJ Morg? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, how about <laughs> Pleasure Lawrence? We are getting right on the edge today. Yes. Foster Zero. <laughs> oh, Travesty ETN. Hopefully, you had this champion, Jared, go off. Or this champion, Christian McDaddy. <laughs> we are right on the line today. Let's go over. Uh, J Jerry, Judelicious. And my favorite, Devin 
Dingleberry. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of conversation last week. Is it Singletary? Is it James Cook? It was neither. Mm. It was a weird game. It was none of the Bills, which is not something you can ever say. Right. I mean, it, it, Diggs, how'd he do? Gabe Davis? Terrible. How'd he do? Isaiah McKenzie? Devin Singletary? I think Josh Allen ended up okay, yeah, right? Because he, he ran so much. Yeah, he was. Because he, he couldn't do anything else. He's impervious to true turd games, but um, <laughs> the Bills certainly it was rough. Uh, did not have the fantasy output that you love. In fact, there was in the press conference, um, I think our, our main account tweeted <laughs> – uh, this, but someone in the press conference asked Josh Allen. It was it wasn't even a question; it was just like a statement. It was like your offense didn't look good enough to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> was, he just goes, they "Okay," <laughs> and he rolls his eyes. <laughs> like what? Who said that? Who was? Hey allowed? Josh! Hey Josh! You guys look pretty bad today. In, 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 in the <laughs> statement. See you later. Yeah. I've said what I needed to say. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. In Bengals news, Tyler Boyd exited in the first quarter. It was basically right away. It was a dislocated finger. Uh, there was the reports of, you know, the normal. He's looks really mad. He's slamming his helmet because he knows that he's hurt and he had to leave. We are hearing reports he will miss probably a couple weeks. Yeah, that's the latest. With the dislocated finger. And then this was... A big one. T. Higgins, in our notes here, we have barely played due to hamstring injury. I believe it was one snap. And then, of course, when the game is over, we get a bunch of beat reporters, uh, beat reporters plugged in beat reporters. Oh, he got hurt in the pregame warm-up. Warm -up. Where was that? Was, like, maybe it was somewhere, but I did not get alerted to this anywhere. And it was incredibly frustrating because it was the goose egg in this week when everyone needed T. Higgins. And we knew when he popped up on the report late last week with a hamstring injury, it was going to be dicey. But to go one snap and out, to, to, knowing you were already hurt, was yeah. it, it was devastating for fantasy football. To go one snap and go out, that is we, – we knew he had a hamstring issue. So you were you – were, it was a risk when you started yes. him. And it very well could have played out the way that it did and felt better when it's like, okay, he goes out there and the first play he has, he, you know, hurts his hamstring and has to be pulled. Very similar uh, to when Mike Williams came back from the ankle injury, goes out there, catches his first pass, and, you know, he's back out of the game with the ankle injury. But the fact that we could have had the news that he actually yeah. injured this in the warm-ups and it didn't get out until after the game. We could have made transactions, uh, alerted the Foot Clan to that. It, he was certainly far and away the most – the Monday Punday submissions. Yeah. He was the one – but we don't dunk on people when they get injured. But he usually. was you, – Well, usually. Yeah. I, I looked up DJ Moore's snap counts. He played 96% of snaps. So, right. You know. uh, 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel, he suffered what is to believe to be a high ankle sprain. If he saw it, he went down. Uh, and a heap was immediately grabbing at his leg. So if this is only a high ankle sprain, that's great news for Debo. It's bad news for fantasy football because even if it's a high ankle sprain, I mean, that's usually multiple, multiple weeks, and that would take him out of the playoffs. Yeah, when it comes to fantasy, you basically did lose Debo for the rest of the season because, you know, it's – probably going to be three or four weeks, and then you're not going to be confident to start him his first week back if he does get back early. They are probably going to to target getting him back for the NFL playoffs, Yes, which is great for the 49ers. It, it really looked severe when he was carted off. You thought it was going to be um, a, a, a break. full Yeah, exactly. A, a, a broken ankle and um, see you next year. Players who exited with concussions this week, Russell Wilson, who – that was a crazy game. If you didn't watch the Denver Broncos, Kansas City Chiefs, it was immediately a blowout. 21 nothing in like five seconds. And then Russell Wilson decided that he, he's a young lad again and he's going to run when he's given the opportunity. Russell Wilson was actually moving 
the offense. And then on another run, it was one of those things where the he gets tackled, his head hits the ground really hard. It was one of those one of the scary ones, and you're like, oh man, I hope Russ is okay, but he's concussion, so he'll probably be out this week. Ravens lost their backup starting quarterback, Tyler Huntley. We'll have to monitor that situation. Like, do the Ravens have Lamar back? Do they have a third stringer? Corey Davis from the Jets and Kenny Pickett, quarterback from the Steelers, they all left with concussions. Damian Pierce was having uh, – he had an okay-ish game Yeah, he, should, he for looked, the Texans. He looked good. He was running through tackles. And, you know, you, you worry at the end of a rookie season for a guy who wasn't a workhorse back that maybe he's hitting that rookie wall. But he was playing very well and unfortunately got injured, and especially unfortunately because – there were further goal line opportunities for him yeah. that I think he would have scored on if he was in the game, but unfortunately he was out and they were unable to punch that in. Yeah, he got hurt late and did not come back with the ankle injury, which the the Texans were in the game, so this was not a, hey, it's a blowout. It. Damian Pierce, we're going to hold you out because this game is over. So you, we know that he was hurt. Jeff Wilson of the Dolphins, he was carted off with a hip injury. Mike White of the Jets, he was in and out. He took some brutal hits. Just, I mean, it, like, I think that the defender was running 35 miles an hour and just a shoulder right into the stomach region of Mike White, and he went down in a heap. He, he, he looked, kept coming back. I mean, giant kudos to the toughness of that man. That was one of the most brutal hits that I can remember seeing that wasn't to like the head and neck area. Right. It was just like a good, clean tackle. Is a body shot. But basically, it was like he had an elbow hinge in his st yes. sternum. Yes. The body does not hinge there. He just ran through the guy. Um, did come back. That'll be interesting because um, it, it, it could get worse before next week. And he's such a good streaming yeah. option. He in was taken to the hospital as precaution at the end of the game. Not a sentence you like to hear. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to, hey, good work, everyone. We, you know, Good game, good hard fight. I'm going to swing by the hospital real quick. Just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, just going to get in this ambulance just you know, for a second. Just to check it out, just yeah. to make sure. So we hope that Mike White is okay. DJ Moore is undergoing imaging tests to determine the severity of the ankle injury that he suffered at the end of the game. Giants tied in. Daniel Bellinger exited with a rib injury. He had just come back. He was on his way to being uh, very involved in that offense. Broncos running back Mike Boone, he just came back, and he left with a high ankle sprain. And for the Titans, Dontrell Hilliard was carted off. Uh, don't like to see that. Neck injury. With the neck injury. He was the primary backup for Derrick Henry, so that will be a situation to monitor and try and figure out if there's anything that actionable for fantasy football. For tonight... Rondale Moore of the Cardinals, he is out. Jacoby Myers, he is out. Damian Harris is doubtful with the thigh injury. Do not expect him to play. Ramondre is going to be everything. He's going to be very good yeah. against the Arizona Cardinals. That was today. News and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. <laughs> Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. All right. Some starts of the week, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, came through. Uh, what Pleasure, Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, Pleasure, Lawrence. I mean, dude, he, the Tennessee <laughs> Titans defense, we knew that this was one you target for the passing game. Uh, but goodness gracious, 368 passing yards with three passing touchdowns, adding a rushing touchdown to that. He had a monstrous week. Because 30 for 42. Like, he was great. Yeah, I mean, he targeted Evan Ingram. I mean, the greatest tight end Dude, of all time. Schmevin. Schmevin Ingram. I was hoping Andy was here today so that in the Monday Pundays we could just have him say <laughs> Evan, Evan Ingram. Ingram. <laughs> uh, it was some very poetic justice for me as a team that I needed to lose desperately in League of Record to help me make it to the playoffs. They looked across the aisle, and that who do they see at tight end? It's nothing. Don't worry about it, because it's Evan Ingram. And then my tight end champion, woo, bailed me out in a big way. It was 
fantastic to see. Every time you looked at the Jacksonville game, it was another target. I think he had 15. 15 targets. 10 catches. I mean, he, he had a monster game. He is, we'll get to him. He's currently. Sorry, the, I got a little excited for Evan Ingram. He's currently the tight end what on the season, Mike? Oh, I mean, he was already like a fringe top 12 guy, and then a performance like this catapults you. I'll go seven. Four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Top five tight end, Evan Ingram. And that just shows you how bad tight ends yeah. are. Uh, Jalen Hurts. He's the QB one on the season. He looks basically unstoppable. The first half was all, I'm going to shred the New York Giants secondary. The second half was, oh, you you had a new plan? Well, guess what? Now I'm going to run. And he went 7 for 71 with a score on the ground. The Eagles seem unstoppable. They, they just they really do like at this point they do yes you can go so many different directions they can run the ball well with their running backs Devonta Smith has been awesome AJ Brown is even better and then if you can shut all of that down which you can't but if you can then Jalen Hurts just runs all over you uh what oh Dallas Goddard potential to come back this week that is something no. we will. <laughs> No. You have the bye week. I know, but I want him to stay out three more weeks so I can have the championship. So you, you just want Dallas Goddard to be fully, be healthy, fully for healthy for Philadelphia. For the for the NFL playoffs. Yeah. That's what matters for them, and Devontae Smith is what matters to me. <laughs> so, come on. Jared, go off. It happened. Everything was there on paper. I love it when a plan comes together. That was your start of the week. That was your league of record champion. It was, that was your draft game. It was lineup. everything. Yes! It was everything, and he came through in a big way, 330 and three back-to-back -back quarterback four finishes. He has jumped into the top 12. He is going to be an incredibly difficult decision, I think. Yeah, what do you do? Because be the Jets are a great defense. Sauce Gardner is awesome. Their pressure, they're going to sack, even though uh, the Lions have a good offensive line, they're going to sack and pressure Jared Goff. And it's on the road for Jared. Yeah, that who where he's he's been fantastic at home. He's not been great on the yeah, road, and he's been on fire. And now you get Jamison Williams. Yeah, DJ Chark is healthy. Both of them with forty plus yard touchdown bombs. Amon Ra, Swift. I mean, you feel like you want to stay in the flames with Jared Goff, but the matchup says it's very hold difficult. Your breath. So we will figure that out. Foot Clan Russell Wilson against the Chiefs. Like I said, started to have a great game. Two hundred forty seven. Three passing touchdowns, 57 on the ground, was unfortunately knocked out of the game because he was well on his way. Because he, when he got knocked out, it was on like the four-yard line too. So there was another touchdown probably coming for Russell Wilson and company. Kirk Cousins came through 425 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. Brock Purdy. Pretty good. Brock Purdy. It, who? San Francisco 49ers. Just torching the GOAT and company, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We had a discussion last week where we said, are the are the Buccaneers bad? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We were right. Yep. Because I think we said, yeah. Yeah, we did. And then they and then they were really bad. Yeah. Brock Purdy. They got the snot beat out of him. Mr. Relevant now, uh, moving up from his draft position. Josh Allen. <sighs> I feel like if, I don't even want him in this section. Because no. he did the rest of the world dirty. An He's honorary deleting. We're deleting him <laughs> out of the dock. If uh, you played him and you got the got the points from him, yeah. good. But yeah, oh, no, you did. You I deleted like him. <laughs> no, this is for you, Foot Clan. He didn't do enough for his wide receivers. You don't get to be in the studs of the week. Uh, redacted. <laughs> Geno Smith came through at the end. He started off the game with like two yeah. interceptions, looked bad. They I lost it, the game. Like his first pass was an interception or something. Uh, but he did end up, thank you for garbage time. It, yeah. If, it it looked, was. If, you, uh, if you tuned into Sunday Live, I do not have an official upset, almost upset of the week. But I may have said <laughs> some things about Carolina having themselves a good game. And that yeah. happened. Uh, and then Patrick Mahomes continues oh. to do Patrick, ho -ho. Patrick Mahomes. 350 and 3, ho-ho. Uh, Jarek McKinnon was <laughs> 6 for 22 on the ground, but 7 for 112 and 2 through the air. One of the most ridiculous – I mean, Patrick Mahomes does these things all the time, so it shouldn't surprise you. But also, don't don't lose sight of how majestic and crazy these things are when they do happen. It was – Mahomes running laterally. I don't even know if he looked. It was and it just kind of 
like underhand. He was facing the sideline and threw it across his body, and there was Jarek McKinnon wide open, and he rambled for like a 50-yard touchdown you, you or something. you got to think that Mahomes would be an awesome bowler. Mahomes? Yeah. I mean, I'm, he could throw the ball in any direction. That it, He would just be – I'm sure he's a great bowler. I feel like you could fill in – Patrick Mahomes is great, un and it's just fill in the you know like a Mad Libs, right? And I would believe you. Like, do you know Patrick Mahomes is a top tier scuba diver? Oh man, that does not yeah surprise it sounds me. right. Have you seen his calligraphy? Oh it's my goodness, unbelievable! Like uh, the, no no ink blotches, mm -mm. just incredible. Yeah. He, he seems like he's good at everything. Christian McDaddy, <laughs> Christian McDaddy, the RB three on the season. He is my far and away. Easy, clear-cut answer for if we were redrafting for the rest of the season, who's the 101? It's him. The San Francisco McCaffrey is now with Debo out, Brock Purdy in. This is his offense. He gets to go to Seattle this coming week. Delicious. Uh, the the Raiders a couple weeks after that in what will be the championship week. Also delicious. So Christian McCaffrey... If you drafted him number one or got lucky enough to have him drop to number two in your drafts, you are happy with him? No, running back three on the season, and I think he's going to win people championships from here on out, which I don't like to say because you have McCaffrey. Yes, i got to get out of the first round first. Yeah. Uh, Miles Sanders continues to have a tremendous season, 17, 144, and two on the ground. The running back eight on the season – Still a liar, McLiar face telling us not to draft him for fantasy football. Austin Eckler doing Austin Eckler things, which means 15 for 45 on the ground, did have a score, and then 8 for, eight for 59 through the air. Rock solid, just keeps getting it done. The Dallas Cowboy running backs. Oh, just like we knew. <laughs> we, we said, you know. The you process start, was easy. The, you start both, and they both got a touchdown. Pollard had two touchdowns. I mean, absolutely. You played both of them in your DraftKings lineup because yep. you knew yeah. what was going to happen. I knew it was going to be a real competitive game, <laughs> and they were going to rely on these two stud running backs because the game was going to be so close. It took an end-of-game <laughs> Miracle I think it was a 98-yard drive, drive to win against the Houston Texans. I mean, it was the most collapsy. I paid up for the Cowboys' defense. That was a mistake, and uh, it was so crazy because they couldn't get any. The, they have like the best pass rush in the league, and they couldn't get any pressure on yeah. anybody. They couldn't tackle. They it was. I mean, they are looking ahead to next week, and they got the win. So, kudos, but the running backs did well. Nobody else did. Derrick Henry continues to steal souls from the Jacksonville Jaguars defenders. I mean, it didn't turn into a win, but 17, 121, and a rushing score. He did have two unfortunate fumbles, but if you had Derrick Henry, or if, if you have Derrick Henry, and you were watching the last month of him playing where his longest run in the last four weeks was I think 10 yards. Very encouraging to see. No, he's okay. It just was just a little bit of a down month, and now he gets to go yeah. on a run against yeah. the Chargers and the Houston Texans. Let's go. So it, congratulations if you have him. J.K. Dobbins of the Baltimore Ravens. What? Yeah. What? What in what? the world? So J.K. Dobbins comes in, and out of nowhere, just first game back, has a great game. But it, the weirdest thing, and I, I, I don't understand it. I haven't looked this morning to find like. Yeah, I didn't rewatch it. Just watched happened. it live. But there was a play where he breaks free. I mean, he's he's housing it. But oh no, J.K. Dobbins back from injury. He's clearly hobbled. His legs, while he's in the open field, are taking little six inch steps. It's just like oh, yeah. just, And then he basically runs and he uh, got caught yeah he got caught and because he was injured and it was like oh no this is bad and then the next play he's on the field <laughs> and then they give it to him up the gut he bursts through scores a touchdown is he okay is he fine did he not get injured is he injured I no mean, one he, knows he had a great game um if he count if he came out unscathed then this is really good news going forward but I don't understand what happened. It, I, it was, and it was not just you. All three of us watching the game saw the exact same thing: of 
Oh, wow. That sucks for Dobbins. It, it Re-aggravation. Was, no. It, <laughs> it was literally the Madden oh, Greg, the Greg Jennings, Jennings video. Yes. If, you, if you don't know that, you can look up Greg, Greg, Jennings. Greg Jennings. Broken leg. <laughs> he got, got the, the team, team on, on my back. back. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, Chuba Hubbard had himself a nice game against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you had uh, Deonta Foreman was on the injury report all week. He still had the most carries in the game, but it felt like at the end it was just it was all Chuba there uh, for a while. Seventeen or I'm sorry, fourteen for seventy four and a score. But Foreman came through with twenty one carries, seventy four rushing yards. Not the best fantasy day, which sucks to have that volume, that production, and just not actually come through with any touchdowns for the Jets. Zonovan, bam, night. Looks like the real deal. 17 carries, 71, and a, and a rushing touchdown. A beastly rushing touchdown where he broke, I think, like three tackles. He looked fantastic. Yeah, he, he gives me slight, like, tingling. You know, my hair stands up a little bit for my... Your timeshare alarm is... Right. Or alert is going on. My my Brees Hall uh, shares for the future is like, oh, okay, let's calm this down, Zonovan, okay? Just... Uh, he looks real good. He does look... He looks too good. Stop it. <laughs> Najee came through with a decent game for fantasy. Yeah, had a touchdown. And Damian Pierce, we mentioned it. It was 22 for 78 with a score. Unfortunately, he exited with the ankle injury. It's his first rushing touchdown since week five. So it, well, the Texans don't get many touchdowns. That is true. And now with the ankle, you may be going into the first round of the playoffs without him. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with the wide receivers. Jerry Judelicious. The judge. Eight catches, 73 yards, three touchdowns. Funny enough, we were uh, at the end of the, the night, I like to you know put on NFL Network and just kind of refresh mm -hmm. everything that we watch through because your brain is mushed by the end of the day of watching it. And Jerry Judy's, his highlights. And my wife's like, do you call him, you guys call him Judge Judy? Of course we do. <laughs> and I'm like, it's been, it, it kind of fizzled out. But it's been mentioned on this podcast a time or two. But the I absence mean, of Cortland Sutton, an actual competent game from Russell Wilson, turned into a great game for Jerry Judy. He was Justin, found guilty of being a great wide receiver this week. Justin Jefferson set the Minnesota franchise record for receiving yards in a game because he had 223 yards. It's, it's funny because he makes it look so easy. They're like I, I kept seeing good plays from him throughout the game, but I had I just had yeah. no idea throughout the game that it was to that level. He's so good, and some of the catches he makes, they're like impossible. But then it's not like a lot of wide receivers they make these impossible catches and then they have to fall over, and he just makes an impossible catch and then just like is like okay, now I'm running now. Yes, in stride, Jamar Chase, kind of the Justin Jefferson counterpoint. With the absence of all wide receiving options for the Cincinnati Bengals, 15 targets, 10 for 119, and a score. He gets Tampa Bay, the Patriots, and the Buffalo Bills. Kind of an unfortunate uh, end of season schedule, but he's Jamar Chase. Tyreek Hill. Just keeps doing it, man. He just keeps getting done for four for 81 and a score, and he had the uh, the fumble recovery yeah. into a touchdown, which, <laughs> which sucks that you don't get the yardage. Right there because he. Oh, is that how it's counted? You don't get anything I, of that. I don't think so. It's like a fumble recovery. It's not you interesting. Don't get the yeah, so it should have. It, he he did more than the fantasy points he got, but he got enough. I mean, the the guy is unbelievable, unstoppable. Even in a bad game, uh, from Tua and from the Dolphins, Terry kills fine. So, you're telling me that like when we see those end of end of game hook and ladder scrambles and like there's the weird scoring of uh who was the wide receiver that lost the that was Devonta Smith yeah Devonta Smith lost yardage because of the fumble but you cannot gain yardage I, that seems broken yeah the, I you I, can't take away without giving right well right there I needs mean, to be balance you can't have good without bad yeah and this seems that, this seems wrong okay I'm going to talk to the NFL about this uh, the 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 Chargers wide receivers Mike Williams immediately back to huge production only six targets 
but he caught all of them for 116 yards and a score. Keenan Allen is back doing Keenan Allen things. 12 catches, 92 yards on 12, on 12 catches, but that's a that's a PPR factory. Yeah, I, I was really happy that you and I had basically changed our tune midweek and said he's practicing in full. Mike Williams. Should, yeah, yeah, Mike Williams should be back in your lineup because I would have earlier it was like you you probably don't want to play him first game back and that would have felt really bad having six for 116 and yes. one um but uh that was great next week first round of the playoffs tennessee oh yeah baby yeah that feels good dj chark kind of highlighted last week as a potential just right off your waiver wire into your lineup because of the juicy matchup with the minnesota vikings turned into six for 94 and a score juju Hey, welcome back against the Denver Broncos, 9 for 74, and his score gets Houston and Seattle delicious. Zay Jones, the spot start just just keeps getting it done. The the outrageous, I mean, look, I, Evan Ingram took almost everything from uh, Trevor Lawrence, but if, it feels like, how is all this production happening? And then Christian Kirk's over there with, like, what, 50 yards or something? Well, that's because was, these guys went off. I mean... Not it's everybody. Yeah, it's like uh, MVS, you know, didn't get a bunch of yards because Juju and McKinnon got him. You, you just, when you got a lot of mouths to feed, and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram were hungry. They had an appetite, and Pleasure Lawrence said, <laughs> oh, man, I'll feed you. so dirty. <laughs> yeah, yes. So dirty. I like it. I like it. Chris Moore of the Houston Texans, monster, uh, monster game, 10 for 124. Uh, Andy did pivot out of <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is worth Blame bringing him. up <laughs> on Friday's show. Andy has Andy said, "I am not doing another mid-show pivot." He did say that. He said I heard that. him, and the reason he said that is because his last mid-show pivot lost him what would have been a win. Well, he lied to himself <laughs> and he lied to y'all <laughs> because he did a mid-show pivot. Out of Chris Moore into Rashad White, he would have won easily. He lost, <laughs> and uh, that uh, man. There's, there's, you can't. Here's the thing in fantasy: <laughs> when you do a transaction that costs you something, you just can't do that again. You because if you lose a second time the same way, like, oh, I'm not going to do this last second, you know, lineup adjustment. You you know you got a fifty percent chance to lose, but one of those is going to feel so much sure. bad, so much worse it's, if you do it to yourself twice in a row. It's the old adage of like when you're taking a test and it's a multiple choice, like you you go kind of with your first in your first instinct of what the answer is supposed to be, unless you know one hundred percent like oh oh I missed misread, so it, he should have gone with his first mm -hmm, read there mm -hmm. with Chris Moore Hello. dirt cheap. I mean, monster game. Yeah, you had no Nico Collins, and yep. you had no Brandon Cooks, and Chris Moore had ten catches for 124 yards against Dallas. So that's pretty impressive. Adam Thielen. Oh, hey, good to see you, Adam Thielen. Thank you for showing up now. Seven for 65 and a touchdown. The fellas for the Seattle Seahawks. DK Metcalf five for 71 to score. Tyler Lockett. Cannot be stopped. How many games in a row are we at? That's got to be six. Is that six? Six Go. games in a row with a touchdown? He's on freaking fire. He is ridiculously good. And never, like, when you're talking about the best wide receivers in the NFL, here's Tyler Lockett. I mean, I don't know how many years in a row he's asked to do it because you don't bring him up. You're like, well, no, we he's Justin not in the Jefferson, conversation. Jefferson, Jamar, Cooper Cup. He's not Stephon even. Diggs. He's not even given the respect because DK Metcalf is there. You're right. He's not even like the best wide, wide receiver, receiver on his eight. team. Tyler Lockett, wide receiver eight on the season right now. Wide receiver eight on the season. Let me tell you his fantasy fit. Just for fantasy, not yeah. even real life. His fantasy finishes over the last five years. Wide receiver fifteen. Wide receiver fourteen. Wide receiver nine. Wide receiver thirteen. Currently the wide receiver eight. The dude is awesome. Yes. He's fantastic. Let's let's give Tyler Lockett his due. Uh, Richie James, okay, he had a great game, seven for six, seven for sixty one and a score. Donovan Peoples Jones turned into Voldemort's favorite weapon here at the end of the game. This was a road game. Oh, this was a road game. So Amari Cooper 
was contractually yeah. not allowed to have a good game. 12 targets for Peoples-Jones, turned into 8 for 114, gets the Ravens and the Saints. Coming up here, the guys from the Eagles, they it, continue to get it yeah, done. they got it done. Uh, touchdown for both of them. Andy's start of the week, Devonta Smith. Uh, th he's just been awesome while Dallas Goddard's out. I'm going to be really interested to see if this is a level up, and it's like he just is a, a bigger part of the offense going forward because he should be, or whether – the siphoning off of Dallas Goddard I got some bad news being for you. there. Because yeah. <laughs> you know what the truth is. I know, I know, I do. Because Dallas Goddard just adds another weapon. Because he is also very good. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> uh, here we go. Main event time. The tight end. Evan Ingram. Can I interest you in 15 targets to a tight end? <laughs> I thought he had 10 catches. 11 catches. 11 for 162. And to catapults into the tight end four on the season. Is this prescriptive? No. Probably not. He gets the Cowboys and the Jets the next two weeks. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, but. You want someone that is prescriptive? I Let's go. Chig. Chig and Conquo. Uh, Andy start of the week. Start of the week. Six receptions, 45 yards, and a touchdown. Did he have a, a two-pointer? He did. He had a two-point conversion as well. Had an awesome week. Was the is the tight end two so far. He plays for the Titans, by the way. Right, rookie tight end for the Titans. The next two weeks against the Chargers and the Houston Texans are good matchups for Dude, tight yeah. ends. I think if you're scrambling and you know you, you there's you made the playoffs, you don't have a solution at tight end. You want someone that is necessary to the offense, and right now, without Traylon Burks, obviously, if Traylon Burks comes back, there's less guarantee of targets going Chig's way. But which it was a concussion for Burks, so that he could be back this week. Yeah, he, possible. He's, he's a name to know, and honestly, uh, probably still out there on some dynasty waivers. Yes, so pick, for sure. pick him up. He's he's a very athletic, uh, passing the eyeball test, young. Rookie tight end. David Najoku came through 7 for 59 and 1. It feels like it all came on like one drive where, yeah, where Voldemort's like, oh, this I should throw to that guy. And then went back to Peoples Jones. Very strange game for the Cleveland Browns. Dawson Knox. With his uh with with a helicopter touchdown. But it was a weird heli usually he helicopter. He throws in midair. Usually helicopters. Oh, yeah. It's the horizontal. Horizontal. Spin. This was like it was a, a flip. Yeah, but it was weird because it was more than a flip. It was, you know, a flip is like 360 degrees right. vertically. This was more than that. He, like a Mick twist? Yeah. It was really impressive. And when you watch the replay, you're like, did did the ball cross the goal line? No, he's not going to score. Well, he didn't touch the ground on that yeah. flip. He's in. He paused in midair. It was very strange. Dalton Schultz, the doctor, continues yeah. to be a huge part of the Dallas offense. Ten targets. Yeah, Six yes. for 87. Got to feel good about that. And then the Muth is got... There? moderately loose. He scored a touchdown. Yeah. He, he had a nice slant route for a touchdown. It, he's very difficult. Uh, it, look, it, by the way, look, that was Studs of the Week presented by Madewell. Don't wait to upgrade your denim game. Go to Madewell.com today. Get $20 off your next pair of jeans. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. Trust me, Madewell, it's sensational clothing. But to go back to the Muth for a little bit, the the what is going on with him? Like the snap counts this is, to me, this are is... like the snaps keep fluctuating in a in a very strange way, and they were down again this this week. He had six targets, three catches. So now it's been three straight weeks with with three receptions. You got the touchdown this week, so you're happy about it because three for thirty three. If you got that from the Muth without a score, that's that's a bad week, but. I, what are the Steelers doing here that the Muth is not being allowed to get loose? Yeah, the last two weeks, 55% of the snaps two weeks ago, 56% of the snaps this week. I, I, I cannot answer the question of exactly why he is not as involved. Um, I do think that I you're going to keep playing him. I'm not worried about it. He is talented enough, necessary enough um, that he'll be involved. That being said, the issue here is not his talent or even his snaps. It's always going to come down to just the quarterback play, which is and subpar. It might be back to Trubisky now. 
at right. least for a week because of the Kenny Pickett concussion. Yeah, so, uh, you know, e- either way you're going to stay uh, trying to get loose with the Muth. Yeah. And it's just it's all you can do. Put him on the field. So weird. Speaking of uh, guys who let you down. Pooped in his big boy pants. Holy Derek Carr. Yeah, it was Thursday night, but uh, not it's, good. It's worth highlighting again of just how bad it was. 11 completions, 137 yards, two interceptions. And that was when they were favored by a touchdown because no Aaron Donald and no starting quarterback. And woof. Yeah. Uh, Tua, 10 for 28, 145 yards, one passing touchdown, <sighs> QB yeah. 17. This is... I mean that now he's going on the road against Buffalo, gets Green Bay, closes on the road in, for fantasy purposes against the Patriots. It's been a minute the last, since the bye week, uh, man. So, so he had you know four games before the bye where he was you know great quarterback eleven, quarterback one, quarterback four, quarterback three. Since the bye now we're heading into a month of troubles. Quarterback eighteen, seventeen, seventeen. He's got Tyreek. He's got Waddle. So he's got a baseline. He's not someone that's going to go out there and well a base a, a QB seventeen baseline is not yeah you're talking about that's that's off key that's out of tune you're you're getting to the teens of points and that's not right. what you want as a quarterback certainly not good enough fantasy finishes for playoffs and on the road against Buffalo that's scary Dak Prescott it happened we this was even, it happened even with. The game script that said it shouldn't happen because he was necessary, but Dak only finished with 284, one touchdown, had two picks, wasn't great. Hopefully, you pivoted away. That's kind of where we ended up by the end of the week. Of, yeah, but we I'm were de- looking for different options. I'm deleting this entire game oh, for from sure. memory. It's it's irrelevant. They didn't show up. He, he, the Texans were excited, and these human beings are going to hit the reset button and probably be more back to the teams we saw prior to this week Saquon Barkley uh, man it was such a bad spot to be in of he popped up I think it was Thursday maybe with the neck injury and it was oh that that's strange he was still practicing so it seemed like we had video footage of him practicing and okay Saquon Barkley should be fine and then you had coach Dable come out and, and say these things of like well he might play I think he might maybe he might miss and then it was get an MRI to see if he's okay to right. play like he's, medically he's whether 50, he should or not 50 and then he was active <sighs> unfortunately that turned into very low snaps against and then against the Philadelphia Eagles nine for 28 two receptions for 20 yards so they talked about this they said that they're oh, they had a plan to have Saquon on a snap count but it wasn't this low what happened in this game was that the Eagles just whipped the snot out of them. It was a blowout pretty early, and then they said basically they they were going to have him a little bit more limited, but not as limited as it was, but the, the score was out of hand. So if you've got an injured star player, you're not going to throw him out there when you're down three scores uh, you know, and, and uh, right. risk his body. So that was, that was unfortunate. It's going to be hard to decide if you made the playoffs with Barkley. Um, I mean, adding insult to injury was – he had three carries inside the five. Yeah. It, three. Oh, you were holding your breath because you needed Saquon oh, yeah, to yeah. have a bad game. Yeah, and, but I I mean, I get it. Foot Clan out there, there's many of you counting on Saquon Barkley. So the fact that you had this low of an output of you, you had to play the game of do I play Saquon Barkley, which I don't have Barkley on any teams, but I 100% would have played him because right. I feel like that was the right process. Three carries inside the five. And he still is in the the poopy pants club for I, the week. I think next week he's going to be someone that you need to take a long and hard look at. He is not an auto start, assuming he is active against Washington, who's had a really tough run defense. You would expect that to be a lower scoring divisional game. It's not that you can't start Saquon; it's that he is not an auto start. You need to actually say, "What am I expecting to get here?" And is there another player who could have you know a a, a bigger day? You know, I'm sure we'll get the Zonovan Knight versus Saquon Barkley questions later, oh. and we won't want to answer them. Uh, on the Cleveland Browns here, let's have a quick conversation. What 
what do you do here with Nicholas Chubb, who small sample of playing games with Voldemort Watson, but in both of those games, Houston, Cincinnati, he will be finishing outside of the top 24. They, it feels like they don't want to give him as much work. They keep giving the ball to their $200 million quarterback, and that's turning into bad fantasy performances for Nick Chubb. Are you confident of like this is just we'll wash our hands of these past two weeks and move forward with Nick Chubb with full confidence against the Baltimore Ravens coming up this week? Yeah, I mean, because it's it it it's dicey. Yeah, you're not going to bench Chubb. Just he's adjusting. Not, he's not injured. You're going to adjust the expectations. This next week against the Baltimore Ravens, I think, should be a decent week for Chubb because it's divisional matchup. They've probably got a third string or at least a backup quarterback playing, so you don't expect them to hop out to a lead the way that the Bengals were able to against them. And you know that's that's the type of game you need to rely on Chubb a little bit more for. But he is, you know, three of his last four games, even before Voldemort came back. Yeah, but that was just one. You had one down game against the Buffalo Bills compared to an entire season. Yeah, I mean, of dominance. Yeah, nine straight games of being incredible for fantasy football, and it's really falling apart here at the end of the season. Frustrating. The Detroit Lions, DeAndre Swift, popped back up onto the injury report mm. last week, popped right back into the role that he was playing when he was on the injury report of six carries, four targets, didn't get the bailout touchdown because Justin Jackson came in and got – Got a rushing touchdown. 36% of snaps. That is the really upsetting number. So, assuming that... If, Super upsetting. I mean, you're just going to watch and see if DeAndre Swift is back on the injury report this we week. We all know the answer to that. He's question. going to be. Yeah. And then they play the Jets. <sighs> He's probably back on your bench. Uh, Travis Etienne continues his uh, streak his of, of poor performances. It's on the field a ton, but 17 for 32. The, the matchup was terrible against the Titans. Didn't stop, I mean, the team from being incredible. It's it's a terrible matchup against the run, I should say. But no targets for ETN. Very strange. The Buffalo Bills running backs, as we mentioned, the answer was none of them. Raheem Mostert, this one was very strange because yeah. he was the starter. Like, the... The information that we had of, is it Jeff Wilson? Is it Raheem Mostert? It's kind of been all over the place two weeks ago. You know, it was it was Mostert. It looks like he's the starter. He was, yet again. And then Jeff Wilson leaves the game with an injury, and two is playing poorly. And you can run on the Chargers, and yet Raheem Mostert, 11 carries, 37 yards, one catch. Very, very, very disappointing output for Raheem Mostert. The Seattle Seahawks running backs. <laughs> this... Uh, so they, they were la it was last man standing situation. Is it Tony Jones? Is it going to be Travis Homer? Good friend of football, good friend of fantasy football. Uh, Adam Schefter came out Sunday morning, oh, man. letting everyone know that his sources expect Tony Jones to in fact be the starter over Travis Homer. He played five total snaps, but he was not the starter. but he was not. I will say it. This information, because Schefter is a trusted inside source in the NFL, it it spooked me off of Travis Homer being like this really strong play to, if you're out of options, Homer should be okay in a PPR. Travis Homer played 90% of the snaps. Oh, that's awesome. Great. If you got scared off of him for fantasy football, you dodged a bullet because he was terrible. Nine carries, 26 terrible. yards, three targets, two receptions, eight receiving yards, was pretty worthless for fantasy. Obviously, he was the guy over Tony Jones Jr., and um, neither of them were the guy. The Proud San of Francisco, you. You made it through that name. Thank you. The San Francisco 49ers are the next matchup uh, up. And, and so, honestly, like, I've been loving Geno, and obviously Lockett's been on fire. Metcalf is just uh, awesome. Man, I, this is going to be a tough uh, decision to make when it comes to like I'm not starting Geno against the 49ers Michael Carter of the Jets into the pit of despair feels borderline uh, not rosterable because Zonovan Knight is is that dude the matchup is great 
against the Detroit Lions, but not it, great. it'll be great for Zonovan Knight. Latavius Murray was not able to uh, necessitate his way to fantasy production. He had, had five targets for <laughs> negative one receiving yards total, so that's cool. <laughs> what? what happened? What happened in Denver this last week? Latavius Murray was like the only bright spot of knowing you're going to get volume. He goes bad. Russell Wilson comes out, and he's fantastic. What a world. What a world we live in this week. Jalen Waddell, ugh, gross. Four targets, two for 31. The Buffalo Bills, pass catchers. Hopefully you didn't need a big game from Stephon Diggs because he gave you garbage. Three for 37. They were they were playing, though, in the massive advantage of the freezing cold rain. Oh, yes. Yeah, and shoot. then the snow. So, I mean, it worked because the Bills won the game. Put a roof on it, man. It it was it was <laughs> freezing cold rain to start the game, which is worse than snow. Eventually, it turned into snow in a tough matchup against the Jets. I mean, this this was one where we kind of saw this coming, but there's no way you could bench Stephon uh, Diggs, which makes it all the more painful because you know, you know, deep down inside, with the weather report, with the matchup, I'm probably getting a stinker here for from Stephon Diggs. But then when the stinker shows up, you're still shocked and you're really mad about it. Mm -hmm. But here we are. The The Cowboys wide receivers also had a bad game. Shocker, because Dak had a bad game. <sighs> Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. It was 5 for 54 for Chris Godwin, so PPR-wise, not the worst. Had a really strange, uh, uh, what should have been a touchdown to Chris Godwin because it was an end zone target. Kind of got knocked up into the air, and then Russell Gage came down with the errant's uh, pass there. Mike Evans, four for 44, had a 70-yard touchdown. I don't, back. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. It's deleted from my it, I mean, it's deleted from the record book. I'm just letting everybody know that Mike Evans had a wide-open 70-yard touchdown that got called back. On, it was a hold when you saw it. It just was like, oh, man, that's such a bad break here for Mike Evans. Mari Cooper. My, Mike Evans. He was on the road. Oh, back to Mike Evans. What do you do? What do you do? Asking for a Nine targets. Me. Nine targets. He had nine targets two weeks ago. Finished <laughs> with four fantasy points. Had nine targets this week. Six fantasy points. Seven fantasy points in between those two. Seven fantasy points the week prior to that. I mean, it's a month of him being awful. So what are you going to do? Uh, well, I'll definitely start Christian Watson over him, but I am genuinely, I am at the point where I am actually, my call is Mike Evans or Joshua Palmer. And this is oh. Joshua Palmer with Mike <laughs> Williams and Keenan Allen. And if I had made the Joshua Palmer decision every single week, it would have been right. He's just, so it's, it's really tough. Now, this next week against Cincinnati, oh man, I, I, I just, I know the 70 yard touchdown that's that gives me hope and um you know some glimmer some silver lining in the massive storm cloud but we're going to the playoffs we need big games why has Mike Evans been so bad it's a fantastic question that I don't have the answer to Amari Cope Amari uh, Cooper it was on the road yeah we knew that Christian Kirk big time letdown five for 45 speaking of big time letdowns Mark Andrews, who, I mean, we're talking now, week six was the last time you got Mark Andrews. I know he's been injured inside of that, and Lamar Jackson has also been hurt, but what do you do? Like uh, He was two for 17 with, with backup quarterbacks. We had at least some hope because Tyler Huntley kind of over-targeted him Mark Andrews last year when, when Huntley had to come in, that didn't really happen. That well, didn't, Huntley left the game, played 60% yeah, of snaps. Sure, he played yeah a little bit over the half of the game, but six targets, two for 17. I mean, there's it's very easy what you do with Mark Andrews. You start him. You 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 wipe your tears, um, and you say, what that if it sucks. is What if it's third-string quarterback Anthony Brown, who is an undrafted free agent? <laughs> I don't have the stones. The only the only option that is possible, right? Like that that would be out there on waivers is probably Chig Okonkwo. And Schmevin might be out there. 
Schmevin might be out there, but the last two weeks for Schmevin, which have been great, he's had great tight end matchups. This is a really bad one. He is not matchup proof just because he has a good game. Right. Like Evan, I, yeah, Evan is out. Evan, I'm not starting Evan Ingram next week. Chig has a good matchup uh, next week. If Traylon Burks is out, I think some people might make that move from Mark Andrews to Chig. I will not be one of those okay. people. I'm just going to stick with them. They're too small. Fair enough. Uh, since week seven hasn't surpassed 65 receiving yards. That's uh, that's not great. George Kittle had another dumper of a game, four for 28. We do have an update here. Brock Purdy is getting an MRI today on his oblique. He got hurt on the game's second drive. Clearly he played through it. He played fantastic for the San Francisco 49ers. But we'll have to wait and see what the news is on that. Greg D. Eight eight targets for Greg Dulcich. Oh, against Kansas City? Yeah. That's going to be a big game. Three for 42. Gerald Everett in a smash spot against the Miami Dolphins. Eight targets? Five That's going to be a big game. <laughs> Five for 28. Oh, tight ends. And then we have the Goose Crew. Mike Gesicki continues his dominance. Of, I mean, his... His his stranglehold on the Goose Crew right now three straight weeks. Yeah, he's <laughs> very impressive. Yeah, it's one 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 honk for each goose there. Uh, well done, Mike Gusicki is King Goose. No offense, and then Foster. Uh, it, how do we say his name now? We, we, so we found out. Yes, that it is. Which we apologize to Foster. I didn't know we were saying it, his his name incorrectly. Right, it's spelled Moreau, but no. It's Foster Morrow. It's Morrow. Okay, the emphasis of the O is earlier in the right. name. Right, just like the word mo hey. more, and then O. Oh. oh, look at oh. that. Hey, that's a way to break that down. Yeah, I'm here I'm here for uh, grammar. That is going to do it for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you got what you need. If you need something big tonight, uh, I mean, I hope you get that too. I think you're going to get it. There's some, there should be some delicious fantasy action tonight with the Cardinals and the Patriots. I doubt that. I mean, uh, what do you mean? No, there should be. Okay. Uh, Kyler, Hopkins, Marquise Brown, important players. Yes. Um, Connor, I just, should be. Yeah, but it's the Patriots defense. It's at home. Uh, I am less optimistic than you for. Uh, how about this? Ramondre Stevenson should have a great game. He should. There you go. I mean, I'm just saying should. I'm not doing any crazy guarantees. Okay. Oh, come on. That's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow. The waivers for the playoff run. The streamers. It's going to be a great show. Stay safe, everybody. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.